Good morning mga kaibigan. Welcome back to our lecture series dito sa lecture room natin. We are still under lecture 101. Due diligence guides before buying a real estate in the Philippines. Now we have already finished discussing the first two guides. Now we are still under the know the seller. Pero pag-usapan natin po ngayong araw na ito is paano po kapag sa titulo eh nakita natin single siya. So let's say Juan de la Cruz single. Tapos ngayon gusto niya ibenta but at the time of sale married siya. Yan po ang pag-usapan natin ngayon araw na ito. So let us start. It is our ceremony to discuss the definition first of due diligence. Uh, pabalik-balikan natin yan. Ulit-ulit tayo para hindi natin makalimutan. Usahin natin ulit. So, uh, due diligence is the investigation or exercise of care that the buyer is normally expected to do before entering into a real estate sales agreement with the seller. So, we have enumerated. Number one, know the proof of ownership. Number two, know how to verify land title. Number three, know the seller. Number four, conduct ocular inspection. Number five, know the taxes and legal expenses. Number six, find a real notary public. So, dito sa know the proof of ownership, we're done. Dito sa know how to verify a land title, we're done. Dito na tayo ngayon sa know the seller. Alright, dito sa Know the Seller, which is our third guide, meron pang mga additional questions. Like, is the seller married? Number two, is the seller married to a foreigner? Number three, is the property co-owned by two or more persons? Number four, is the seller represented by an attorney in fact? Number five, is the seller a corporation. Ngayon, dito sa mga questions na ito, maraming mga sub-questions pa tayong tatalakayin pa isa-isa. So, we're still here, no? Under the the question, is the seller married? Now, dito pala sa question nito, meron tayong mga sub-questions or issues na dapat nating i-discuss. What are those? Number one, is there a prenuptial agreement? Number two, when is the date of marriage? Bakit importante malaman yan? Sabi ko, hindi tayo nag -usyo. So, number three, single in the title but married at the time of sale. And married but divorced abroad. Married but separated in fact. There is a court degree of annulment or nullity. Iba yung annulment, iba yung nullity na decree. Ha? And there is a court degree of legal separation. Ito yung mga sub-questions issues, no? Now, dito sa prenuptial agreement, I think we are done. When is the date of marriage? Anong importance niyan? We are done also. Ngayon, dito na tayo sa single in the title but married at the time of sale. Okay. Simulan natin. Bakit natin tiyatanong always kung ang seller is married as part of our due diligence. Importante kasi malaman natin dahil dito sa marital consent na ito. Ibig sabihin, kailangan natin ng consent ng other spouse bago may benta ang property. So kung ikaw po yung buyer, eh dapat alamin mo na dapat both of them must give their consent. Yun ang general rule. Sabi ko nga, single, walang problema dahil siya lang mag-isa mag-irma. Alright. Ngayon, this is the question. If single siya sa title, pero pag the time no mag-sale, kita mo, married siya. So, single in the title, but married at the time of sale. Baka kasi i-argue ng seller sa iyo, hindi ko na kailangan ng spouse ko mag-pirma nito. Because single ako eh. Akin ito before uh, kami kinasal. So, this is mine exclusively. No, do not agree. And you have to conduct further diligence. Ganito yan. Marital consent is needed. Remember, on the following instances. Number one, if the property regime is absolute community of property. Remember, sa absolute community of property, 
everything that the spouses brings during the marriage shall become a conjugal property. It is considered as community property. Both of them will own the property already. Now, when is marital consent not needed? These are the instances na dapat yung matandaan. Number one, if it is a conjugal partnership of gains, ang property regimes nila. Or number two, ang property regime nila is complete separation of property. Diba? Malala niyo yun? Balikan natin na. When is the date of marriage? Sinabi nga natin, pag married on August 3, 1988, pataas, absolute community of property tayo. Pag married on August 2, 1998, and pababa, conjugal partnership of gains. Bakit importante ang August 3, 1988? Dahil August 3, 1988, nag-take effect ang Family Code of the Philippines. Now, sa Family Code of the Philippines, sinasabi na kapag ang properties during the time na single ka, eh, nag-asawa ka, this becomes part of the community property. Ganun din sa future spouse mo. Because the regime that will govern is the absolute community. Except kung may prenuptial agreement kayo na complete separation. But if none, presumption is that it is a absolute community property. Now, kung kinasal kayo, August 2, 1988, pababa, tapos wala kayong prenuptial agreement, ang presumption naman is conjugal partnership of gains. Ano ba sabi natin? Kapag single ka pa, tapos naka-acquire ka ng properties, and you married under the conjugal partnership of gains, pag-asawa mo, that will be considered as an excluded property. Sabihin, yung property mo na acquire ng single ka, hindi dapat kasali sa conjugal property and therefore that is your solely own and therefore walang pakialam si spouse niyan. So, yun ang tanong sa sagot natin. If single in the title but married at that time of date. So, kung absolute community sila, kailangan. Pero kung kinasal sila August 2, 1988, pababa, tapos walang prenuptial agreement, presume conjugal partnership of gains, hindi na po kailangan ang marital Concept. Yan po importante. Kaya, um, you have to know all these things kasi sometimes kasi uh, the, the seller will say na hindi, hindi na to kailangan because this is mine and ikaw automatic, ang, ang sa mind mo is that ay, married din siya, dapat kailangan. Ah, hindi ka magpirma, hindi na tito na yung transaction. No, sayang. You have to determine if it falls under these kinds of category. Kasi there are instances, especially if it falls under conjugal partnership of gains and it becomes an excluded property, therefore, it can be sold by the other spouse without the consent of the other spouse. Right? So, so with that, we are going to continue our lecture. Still, nandun pa rin tayo sa know the seller. This time, on the issue of marriage sila, but divorce abroad. Right? Uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Danke and sukran. I'll see you soon, guys.